Sam Zell was one of the biggest real estate owners in America. But just moments before the whole market crashed in 2008, he started a bidding war and sold his property holdings company for $39 billion, making him richer than God himself. Although he graduated law school at the top of his class, 43 law firms rejected him when he applied for a job. So, Chip, that I'm gonna let the whitest man that I have ever seen interview for our firm. Eventually, one firm decided to give him a chance, but after just four days, he resigned, making it the only job he ever held in his entire life. Sam once said that he learned everything he needed to know about business at the age of 12 when he started selling Playboy magazines, understanding the true meaning of supply and demand. He was called a genius, a philanthropist, a foul mouth and a jackass. I want to make enough money so I can afford you. Most people don't know much about this man, but they really should. There is no doubt that he has changed the world, and his story is one of the most extraordinary stories I've ever heard. It's inspiring, nerve-wracking, and most of all, it's absolutely insane. When Sam's mother was pregnant with him, her family escaped Nazi-occupied Poland by train just hours before Hitler's army bombed the railroad tracks that ran through their town. It was the last train to leave the country for years. Considering Sam's family was Jewish and the fact that three million Jews in Poland were killed by the Nazis shortly after the Zelds fled, it's safe to say he was born lucky. It was this luck, combined with unbelievable ambition, street smarts and the willingness to hustle that made him one of the richest people in the world. At the age of 12, Sam enjoys another big break when his father's jewellery business takes off and the family moves to the upscale neighbourhood of Highland Park. This move lays the foundation for little Sam's first business and it could not have come at a better time. Surrounded by rich teenagers in his new fancy neighborhood, he strikes gold. So how old were you when you took the train downtown to buy Playboys and then go back to Highland Park to sell them? And that, that was probably the first, that was the first business with no capital or... Yeah. Did, did you borrow the capital? Uh, I was 12 years old. <laughs> uh, I really understood <laughs> supply and demand. <laughs> uh, I walked into a, um, a magazine stand under the railroad tracks, and they sold different kinds of magazines than what they sold in Highland Park. <laughs> and I saw this new magazine called Playboy, and I bought it for 50 cents. I read it on the way home on the train. <laughs> Just for the articles, right? For the articles. Okay, good. And I then showed it to a friend of mine. He said, wow, <laughs> can I buy that? I said, sure. So I sold it to him for three bucks. That's a great margin. And then... The every, rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. The year is 1961 and Sam is now a young man starting his junior year at the University of Michigan. The only reason he kept attending classes was to prove to his dad that he was as smart as his siblings. But Sam's school performance is just mediocre at best. He becomes fixated on finding an idea that will redeem him in his father's eyes. And he does. It will be Sam's lucky strike number three, the one that will change his life forever. Just a few blocks away from his college, a real estate developer is building a 15-unit student apartment building. And despite having no idea what he's doing, Sam is not about to miss this opportunity. We didn't know how to manage for rent apartments. We had no clue what it entailed. It just never occurred to me that I couldn't do it. This pays off and the owner hires him to manage the apartments. 
Just a few years later, Sam will be crowned as the real estate king of North America. But back to Michigan State University. After graduating from undergraduate school, Sam goes to law school, and by the end of his time there, he and Robert, his frat brother, manage 4,000 apartments and own more than 100 buildings. But if Sam had to be honest, there was no master plan. The opportunities presented themselves, so he took them. This was a bit of an issue because he had no idea what would be his next step. So Sam decides to become a lawyer and make his parents happy. There is only one problem. I struck out 43 interviews with 43 different firms. Uh, and the net result was that I got not one single job offer. The, the job I did get was with a very small law firm, you know, and I was there for four days and uh, went in to see the senior partner on Friday morning. And I said, I just don't think this is a good use of my time. And he was stunned that he, he just looked at me and he says, you quitting? I said, yeah. Now, Sam was ready to go big. His first investment is a 99-unit apartment building, and the price tag is $1 million. His calculations indicate that the worst-case outcome is an 8% return, and the best case is an 18% one. Sam is wrong. The actual yield on this deal was an unbelievable 20%, making him a millionaire at the age of 30. This led to something even better. Sam began attracting the attention of big-name investors, and money started to flow in faster than he could have ever imagined. His portfolio now is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. However, Sam doesn't feel like this is the time to rest and enjoy the fruits of his labor. He wants more, and he wants it to be big. Sam's next move? Commercial real estate. He starts with the Broadway Plaza in Los Angeles and then tries to buy a hotel in Reno, Nevada. But Sam doesn't know one thing. The IRS is coming for him with charges of tax fraud. You see, Sam's brother-in-law, Roger, who was a tax attorney, handled his business affairs at that point. But when Roger's firm became a target of an investigation, Sam is dragged along and they are both indicted. His life is in turmoil, and the empire he built is shaking and crumbling beneath him. If convicted, he will lose everything he has built over the past 15 years. Luckily, Sam is dismissed without being charged, but Roger is not as fortunate. And although Sam dodged a bullet, this will forever leave a mark on his record. Suddenly, he became an outcast in the real estate industry, and investors who once wanted to work with him started turning him down one by one. And to make matters worse, by the mid-70s, the real estate market had become oversaturated, making it almost impossible to find a profitable investment. But living through this new reality makes Sam even more motivated. There and then, he promises to build a business that will be too big and too powerful for anyone to contest him again. So, he does the unthinkable and zigs when everyone else is zagging by turning the game upside down. The decision Sam makes is against everything he has done before, but he stops buying any properties. Cold turkey. You need to understand, this is a time of booming real estate market, so how could he stop? Friends and family start to think Sam has completely lost his mind. But then, the world changes. Here in New Jersey, 10% of the workforce is unemployed. Across the nation, the average is 8%. There is only one man left standing, the Grave Dancer. In the early 70s, uh, there was a big national boom in real estate. And uh, I participated in it. And then in the beginning of 73, uh, everything looked too frothy. And I basically felt that the end of the world was coming. Basically stopped doing deals and spent six months building a distressed property management company. Before and there was the before, distress. Before there was any distress. Um, and then from the middle of 73 till the middle of 77, I basically bought up 
$3 billion worth of real estate all over the country. It only begs the question, how lucky do you have to be to survive not one, but two of the world's largest financial crises and emerge on top while everyone else is crushed? The answer is, you don't have to be lucky. You just need to be very, very smart. And Sam is as smart as they come. It's 2007. With tens of billions in assets under management, Steve Schwartzman's Blackstone is the world's largest private equity firm. The crown jewel of his empire will be the acquisition of Equity Office Properties, which has 500 premium offices in every major American city and is worth more than $30 billion. He just needs to convince one man to sell it to him, Sam Zell. But in the midst of one of the greatest housing booms in American history, a financial storm looms beneath the surface. And guess who knows exactly what's going to happen next? He also knows this is the perfect time for him to leave. And while Steve Schwartzman is controlling the largest fortune in the world, he doesn't know that sometimes you just need to be born lucky and recognize when to get out. Sam's company is worth $40 a share, but Schwarzman believes it's undervalued, so he offers him $42 a share, making it the largest real estate deal in history. But Sam is too smart to take it. You see, Schwarzman is sending the message to the street that Sam's company is undervalued, making everyone want a piece of it. In anticipation of more bidders, Sam rejects Blackstone's initial bid. In response, Blackstone offers $47.5 per share. It's too good to pass up, and Sam will make a fortune if this goes through. But he can't sleep at night. There is only one thought on his mind. Why would Steve Schwartzman buy real estate assets during a huge bubble? Schwartzman is not stupid, and Sam knows that. But then he gets it. Schwartzman plans to sell different buildings to different buyers because each building will sell for more than the portfolio's market value. Oh, Sam will lose the legacy he has worked so hard to build. Now, he needs to find another buyer who can outbid Blackstone. And he does. A major player in the real estate market, Bonado Realty offers a shocking $52 per share and promises not to break up the properties as Blackstone intends to do. However, Sam Zell and Vornado may have underestimated Steve Schwartzman. In response, he raises his offer to $52.25. The competitive nature of Schwartzman often arises from his firm belief that he and his company are better than everyone else. And it might be true, but one thing is sure. They're not better than Sam Zell, who takes the money and becomes the main beneficiary of the biggest real estate deal in history just minutes before the market crashes. A few markets like, say, Las Vegas or Phoenix, where prices fell fastest and hardest, we are not, says economist Dean Baker, anywhere near done with this yet. Nowadays, Sam is 80 years old. He's still actively involved in new deals, working on his philanthropic efforts, and he's even written a few books that you can find linked in the video description. What you need is drive, ambition, self-confidence uh, and energy.